My name is Piotr, and uh, uh, we started this, uh, or we organized this uh, event together with Ella, who's the co-founder and the CEO of Applicate, which you might have heard of. Um, also, uh, when we were organizing this event, uh, the great team from Applicate were very supportive and uh, helped us a lot, so please give them a, a hand and uh, make some noise. Okay, so why even do it? Uh, I'm currently in the early stages of uh, starting my own company and uh, as some of you may already know, that are doing it already, um, it's, uh, well, at this stage you have many needs. You would like to get introduced to a, a specific person or you would like to meet some people that uh, maybe could become your early team members or even co-founders. Uh, co uh, maybe you're looking for early adopters of your technology. And uh, so we would like Hive to be this place where uh, people with such needs could express them and uh, have them heard and possibly even met. And to those of you who are thinking about starting their own companies but haven't quite made that decision yet, we hope that it will serve as an inspiration um, to help us make this first and uh, important step. And apart from inspiration, uh, we really hope you can learn, um, you can gain some uh, some real skills from that, from the meetings. You can make some notes or some mental notes, and um, yeah, we just hope you will make some nice connections uh, also here. I'm sure there are many inspiring and interesting people in that room today, and hopefully that we won't melt <laughs> within an hour. Um, okay, so without um, further ado, uh, we have three great speakers today. You probably read more about them um, on the Hive uh, page, so I will just go quickly and we'll kick off. Um, we have um, actually I forgot something. You have to you have to um, you have to you have to apologize because we're uh, we're not uh, very experienced in running events, but just very quickly. Many people ask us like how the evening is going to look like, so I believe we will spend 30 or 40 minutes on the interview. It will be some long questions and then a quick round of short uh, questions. And then we will uh, go with the less formal part and some announcements. If any of you has any announcements to make, that will be the time for that. And I guess that's it. Did I forget about anything? Yeah, and the networking, but that's kind of um, pretty obvious, right? So, um, starting from your left. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, first big success. So we have uh, uh, Piotr, who is uh, who started his um, um, his company. Uh, was it seven years ago? No, we actually three years ago. Okay, but he you were dealing with. Uh, IT security since seven years, right? And and he's very good at what he's doing. He's really inspiring, I'm sure. Um, uh, he will, he will, he can share some nice stories. We have Rafa, uh, who uh, is a the CEO and co-founder of uh, of um, Handwrite, a, a company that makes great products for um, children, great online products and offline as well. And he's also a, a, a Investor, uh, his seed found uh, it's called uh, Blackberry, so you will see the logo there. And we also have Kuba with us, who co-founded AdTaily. It's a self-service um, advertising network, right? Who was acquired, that was acquired by Agora. So we all know Agora here, and um, he's leading he's leading the product team here in Krakow. So I guess that's it for the introductions. You probably all read it on uh, online. And yeah, let's let's just kick off. Okay, we'll try to do it without the mic because it's. Can you hear us without the mic? No. Can you all hear us? Yeah. Okay. So if we start speaking, it will. Is there any way you guys who cannot hear us can move inside without warning? Yeah. Maybe it will be easier if you just find your places here on the side. I don't know. I think we'll go one by one first, and then we'll see maybe some kind of a interesting conversation or discussion uh, pops up. Uh, so the first question, maybe to you, you about then uh, well, what, uh, what made you start your first company, and uh, when was that, and how old were you at the time? 
Okay, so the problem with the mic is that the line is pretty short, so then again you have to bend. But if that's doable, then let's use the mic. So, hi everyone. First of all, thank you for the invitation. It's a great initiative to be here together with all of you and uh, share the experience from uh, running our own companies. So, your question was about uh, how did I uh, met? Okay. So, so, so basically, when I was founding or creating at Tail, um, uh, it was the it was because of the real need I had working for the previous company. So in the previous company, I was uh, working uh, in the technology and strategy department and was kind of looking for a new way to advertise the business. So I found that if, I found that advertising through the internet, just placing your ad, placing your banner, today in 21st century is a really complex thing. So you need to deal with the publisher, send him an image, uh, send him uh, an invoice and the contract and he need to install the, the, the placement and so on. So I, I, I tried to solve that problem and I discovered that within current technologies it is possible to buy ad directly on a page uh, very easy, very quickly with no hassle. So actually what made me decide to start the company was the, the real uh, the real problem and, uh, and, and they're looking for a way to solve it. Thanks. Okay, hey, hi everyone. Uh, actually, which year is that your first company? Yeah, I started my company it was three years ago, so I, I was 27. Uh, actually, I, I started my, start my first company uh, in 90, the 1990, uh, I was importing cars from Germany to Poland. Um, everything started really, really weird because uh, me and my friend went to Holland for vacation. We were um, 16, I think. And we, we want to get our own money and get as far as we could away from our parents to party. And those days, uh, Holland was a really good destination because it was really popular coffee shops those days and uh, we went uh, for vacation and uh, to work uh, working with plants and flowers actually we we found work in the middle of nowhere there's no coffee shops uh, no pubs nothing just agriculture cows and we came back to Poland after two months and we got a lot of money and we didn't know what to do with those money we went to shop and uh, try to buy some clothes I remember those days I bought two black t-shirts and two black sweaters. Uh, the same, because it was uh, no choice. And actually that was the first company, so a friend of... Uh, actually was a brother, a friend of mine was uh, importing the cars. It was really creative things those days because you have to, you have to uh, bring the cars separately. Uh, engine goes on one car, then the, car, the rest of the car goes on the other. Thing. Actually, I know about the cars nothing, so we hired the uh, uncle of my friends who was looking for a job. And he knew a little bit, but always a lot of part of the car was left. But we sold few of the cars and uh, actually that, that was the first company, but uh, talking seriously, it was 1998. Uh, I was really passionate about photography uh, and I was starting to do photos on, on the weddings those days and I earned a lot of money. And I was a student those days, I could eat, they gave me a lot of food home uh, with me and uh, after wedding photography I really quickly moved to advertising photography and I remember somebody asked me about invoice. I was oh, I have to start my own company to, to get invoice. And actually that, that was the really old time ago and the story is like this. Hi. Actually, I got the same problem. I didn't want to start my own company, but uh, I was running a blog. And, and it happened that somebody sent us an email and asked, can we advertise on the blog? 
And we said yes. And they said, but we want an invoice. So we had to create some legal entity to actually provide an invoice. And, and that was it. And finally, when we got the company, it turned out that uh, more and more people were coming and, and asking about the uh, security, because we were running a blog on security and trying to uh, hire us for doing some security research, uh, some penetration testing. Uh, so from one team to another, we actually create, uh, or should I say, I create a business, uh, hire some people, and that's how we roll. Um. Um, okay, so um, knowing what you know now, uh, what would you have done differently in, in the past year's businesses? So I'm running my business and my company uh, for the three years and uh, answering the question of what I could done differently, I, I could say that almost everything. I mean, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, like, it's like with the advertisement, you know that there are guys who says that uh, the 50% the of the budget for advertising is spent totally wrong, but nobody knows which 50%. So it's, it's kind of with decisions. So I, I could say that uh, as a startup, as an innovative startup, you are taking a lot of decisions. Uh, and and you need to be flexible. So you are taking one decision, just checking how the market reacts, how your user react, what they say, how it, how the business reacts, and then changing your decision. So for instance, today after three years, uh, we 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 have made a lot of mistakes. For instance, with the Polish uh, legal issues with, about the invoicing. So today we need to support it and it's kind of complex and capital intensive. Uh, so, so I could say that uh, there's a lot of such a decisions that you could, you, you could change, so you are learning every day. I can't see any, any, any decision so strong I could change. Maybe, maybe one thing I would never done, I would never ever done again, is splitting company into two uh, lo physical locations. As you might know, at Taylor is divided into the Krakow team, uh, which is the product team. We have developers, the designers, and we have also business and sales team in Warsaw uh, at the Agora offices. So uh, I would never done it again because I know that some of you might uh, read the 37 Signals blogs when they say that it doesn't matter where you are if you are the best. Then, then it doesn't matter, you can build a company on top of people around the world working remotely. I would never done it, uh, attempt it again. I would do my best in order to start in one place to share information, to, uh, uh, to uh, simplify the communication, to inspire each other, uh, to, to know what the business wants, what the product does, and so on. So I think that, that this is one thing that I could change for the Next time, thanks. For me, I would change a lot of things too, but uh, I'd leave it to three. So first was like I would, I would get let's left the, let's leave the the car industry, okay? Let's <laughs> focus more about handbread, for example. I would I would get investor uh, earlier earlier stage, stage because uh, uh, after doing the project, I think it was like 17 or 16 months to get investors. Uh, today I would get much much quicker. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing I would, when we start Hambright and we start our first project, Chufcha, we're uh, mostly focused on business ad model. Today I would spread it and uh, differ it. Uh, and the thing, the, the third thing is. It's, uh, Two years ago, we started uh, Chufcha on the British market. Um, I would do it today totally different way. Uh, we lost a lot of money there. Can I ask you a follow-up to the first thing uh, about getting an investor earlier? Uh, would it be possible to get an investor earlier? Or you just sure. Yeah. Especially in those days. <laughs> I think 
I'll, I think I'll choose outsourcing sooner. Uh, by outsourcing, I mean outsource everything that's connected to your accounting or finance. Uh, I don't know anything about taxing invoices and you know finance law, uh, and I was trying to learn that. <laughs> and that that wasn't something uh, something good. Uh, first of all, when I said that we actually needed an invoice, um, and we we started uh, you know creating the company, we went to the uh, council office or whatever it's called in Polish uh, to create a company. And, uh, the lady asked us, "What's your tax model?" So you need to pick up one of the the first one is uh, a scale. Uh, when you pay 80% of taxes yearly, or 32% of taxes yearly, if you if your um, income is greater than uh, I can remember 80k or something, and we thought, okay, this advertising is like uh, I don't know 10k, and probably that's it. Uh, so we went for the first scale model, not the linear tax. And then at the end of the year, after I don't know eight or ten months. Uh, we need to give away a lot of cash because <laughs> we hit the first lever multiple times <laughs> and you, you cannot do anything I mean that was the problem um, also uh, in terms of finance uh, you can pick up how you do your taxes uh, is it by quarter or monthly or whatever uh, we pick up quarter and that was good because you didn't have to sum up all of the invoices, uh, incomes, outcomes, uh, costs and whatever. Uh, on the monthly basis you can do it just one per three months. So that was, uh, that was a better solution. And then uh, legal things. Uh, we are connected to security. Uh, so clients basically provide us with the sensitive information. Uh, you need to t take care um, about those information, client information of our clients. Uh, you need to protect them, you need to know the law uh, and guarantee a client that uh, his data is uh, really secure uh, when we're working on it. And there are few things connected to securing data uh, in Polish law in terms of uh, information processing. Um, you cannot learn this by yourself if you are not a lawyer. I mean, even if you try, if you try to uh, read the law, you probably won't understand anything. Just think about your, um, I don't know, contract with your bank or something. This is the typical thing. Uh, outsource legal to some legal firm or company. Um, and basically that's it. Outsourcing as early as you can. Okay, this will be a quick one. Uh, so, what is it about starting or running your business that uh, you love the most, uh, that you wake up to? Uh, it's, you know, the, the difference between working for somebody when you are, um, when, when you just, you know, deliver your duties or your objectives, and uh, your own company, when you decide your vision and what you want to do, is, is that you wake up in the morning and think, damn, I need to try this one today. So, so you go to work and set up a vision together with your uh, colleagues, and, uh, and, and, and then you, you, you can see how this vision is being implemented, and you can see how users, customers, interact with that and, and hopefully pay, uh, pay bills. <laughs> So, so I think that the, 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 the biggest fun of, of, of a tele is that you can observe the, the, um, um, the, the process between a, an idea and the execution. I think the most uh, inspiring thing uh, for me is like that you can ch change your passion into your work. So actually all the time Running your own business will influence what you're doing. And, uh, everything is up to you. And so, so basically, you can change your passion into your business. I like controlling everything. <laughs> I mean, when I was working for a company, a uh, full-time job, I had to be uh, at the office at I don't know eight o'clock. Spend there a few hours. 
uh, when they told me to work with a specific client, I had to work with that client, answer his emails or, you know, smile and pretend that he's, he's not an idiot. Um, right now, I, I got this comfort that uh, if somebody uh, wants to do business with us and we don't like that guy or that company, uh, we can just say, sorry, we are not available or just propose a price that is too high uh, for that company if you want to be, you know, passive aggressive. <laughs> and uh, that's a good thing because uh, I, I think if you don't have to, I mean, if you don't really don't have to uh, spend your time with people you don't like, uh, you're not, you know, feeling comfortable with them, uh, you shouldn't do that. So I can say no right now because I have a lot of other clients, but maybe someday that won't be so easy. Okay, so focusing on the things uh, you don't like. Um, it's not a quick question because we have a whole list of them. So what's not that fun in running your own circus? Yeah, let's start from the other side. Accounting. <laughs> Outsourcing. <laughs> um, there is one thing. Uh, you, well, and it's connected to outsourcing and uh, thinking about everything. I mean, if you are the boss, you need to take care of somehow finance, uh, legal things, and so on. It's not like you have to know everything, but you need to control uh, if they are not hitting the deadline. Uh, so this controlling uh, on one hand is something really nice, but on the other, uh, it means that you spend time on uh, things uh, you don't really uh, like or you're not fond of. And um, you're just wasting your time. I mean, if you try to outsource it, it's cool, because uh, you are getting much more time uh, to think about your business idea, uh, develop new solutions, or do whatever you like. And that's probably better for your company. I totally agree that accounting and all that legal issues is uh, something that, uh, that is pain. pain. But I, I could say that, you know, when, when, I, when I was starting the company, we, we, we have been three people and today we are uh, 20 uh, in these two locations, as I said. So, so I think that within the time, I'm, and also I'm, I'm the product person, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a technical person, so I'm, uh, I love to you know, sit next to the computer and, and discover things and interact with the machine instead of humans. So. <laughs> So I I haven't I I I underestimated the the role of the communication and the, the, the people things. So if you have 20 people on board, in order in, 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 you need to start solving not the technical and product or business uh, problems and challenges. You also need to solve you know people and communication challenges. So I think that this is something I, I haven't, uh, you know, uh, I haven't taken into consideration, and it's important. So, uh, is there anything in your business that you would like to change, like whether it's a model or clients or you know, things like the, the bigger things? No, everything is perfectly fine. <laughs> I mean, that's something uh, uh, Atelier said. I mean, if you are growing up and uh, you need to hire more people, then you have uh, some issues with the people and, and you understand why uh, you need to have something like HR department or, uh, you know, the most useless department in the company that if you are not running the company, you think they are just useless people who ask you a stupid question during the interviews. Uh, but, but this is something that probably makes sense if you are getting bigger. So I think I, we'll have to prepare for more people, and that's something that probably scares me um, because I, I don't have any mentor, uh, and I would really appreciate somebody who uh, went through the path I'm going right now and give me some insights. Like uh, I was there. Uh, we did this mistake and that mistake, and you should do probably this or that. Um, so this advising uh, 
if you have it, it's really, really good. So, what the question was about... Why would you change about your business? Okay. So, I think that those of you who are planning to run your own business or already doing, and where and your business model is based on kind of a multi-site platform, which means that you need to, let's say, the game developers and the game consumers or you need to the publishers and the advertisers, or you need to, I don't know, some providers and the customers. So whenever you need to build an ecosystem, an ecosystem with this kind of sites, it's, it's challenging. So business models based on such ecosystems, it's, it's, they, they are very difficult due to the, different, due to the simple um, reason. Because you need to each time solve the, the chicken and the egg paradox. So if you don't have advertisers, publishers will not come. And if you don't have publishers, advertisers will not come either. So you need to try to solve such a paradox. And, uh, and I think that I would change next time, or we are actually in the process of changing that. So I would uh, try to build a different business model, which, which is not that much uh, connected to solving that that paradox. So, how how we how we solve that uh, at the tail? That was very easy. Uh, I mean, from from this perspective, uh, we when we have been uh, looking for an investor to a tail, uh, we have received uh, several term sheets, and we have decided to uh, to sell part of company to Agora, which is the biggest. Uh, media group here in Central Europe because it does solve our paradox of chicken and egg because Agora, apart from money, they brought to the company uh, publishers and also advertisers and this critical mass has started to gravitate and attract another advertisers and so on so this time it was an easy solution but it, it isn't always like that so, so those of you who are planning to run your businesses uh, you, you need to you know, think once, yes. The question was what I was... Uh... What did you change about your business? Okay. The business model? If you, if you could, yeah. Uh, if you okay. Model. Actually, uh, in Hungary we're working about uh, changing and improving each of those sites, as you said. For example, about business model. We are looking for better business models and uh, I could imagine in, in, in two, maybe three years, uh, I would love uh, to draw up business ad model. So there will be no advertising in Chufcha and uh, any other things. It's not possible right now. And so we are looking for diff other different uh, business models. Uh, for example, monetize we are monetizing a user. It's going really well, it's growing. Business model. Okay, what, what, what else? Uh, mostly, mostly um, if you start your own company, uh, just look uh, really wide. Because the, the first things in your mind probably will be uh, advertisements. But it's not working really, really good and really smooth. Um, especially in Poland, the, the media houses, the advertising agencies, the clients, the marketers, it's really complicated business and the cash flow and uh, the energy going really, not really smooth. This should be a quick one. Uh, how did you close your first big sale? Like the, um, you, you mentioned some of the initial sales, so it would be even more interesting to learn about the actual moment when you felt, okay, I got that client, wow, that's that's really happening, so if you could share. Uh, uh, actually, you know, I'm, I'm not a sales person, and I, I have never closed any, any sale. Uh, but your company. Yeah, but, but our company does uh, very often. So, I could say that from my perspective, the, the sale was to promote the idea behind the tape. Uh, when we have, um, when, when we have uh, kind of created the concept for a tailing, it was very easy. So just the widget on the page, 
you can click advertise here and in the same place you could upload your picture, pay online and that advertisement would you know, be displayed here. So that was the, that was the uh, basic concept. So what we have done, we haven't, we haven't built any prototype, we just created a PowerPoint presentation and we, we sent that presentation to Seed Camp. Seed Camp is a kind of uh, in, uh, seed investment fund, a competition for startup in London. So, so we sent a PowerPoint presentation with our concept to London and we kind of uh, compete with 200 other ideas from Europe and, and, and surprised they, they invited us to, to show our company. And we just had a PowerPoint presentation, uh, but uh, we, 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 we tried to not tell them the truth. We, 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 we've been trying to, perceive, to be perceived as a company with the you know, management team and the CEO and so on. So, so actually, I could say that this is kind of a sale. So, so that, this is kind of my first sale. So I created a concept, I, I, I made a presentation and I go there uh, and I presented, and it was uh, it, it, it received very positive feedback, and we received from London. And Agora called us, "Hey guys, you have a brilliant product. Come to us, and we want to invest into it." So, so, so this is kind of my first sale. Um, actually, the meaning of the big sale is changing through the years. Because uh, I remember ten years ago, the big sale was about ten thousand zloty. Uh, today the big sales where we're counting in the millions, yeah? but uh, the, so it's, it's it's really good that the big sales, the meaning of the big sales is, is always big sales after and always the big sales before us. Uh, but I, I agree uh, with Kuba. Uh, selling part of the company to the investors uh, is a big sale, definitely, because you are selling the story. And uh, actually, all the sales is about selling story. If somebody. Uh, we trust you if somebody's story is really good, if, this, if, the, if it's true story, uh, that's you get a really good opportunity to sell, uh, to close your first deal. I agree. Yes, uh, what, what, we did, what we did with the first sale, uh, after that advertising one-time thing, we decided, uh, okay, so we got a company right, right now, uh, what else can we do? And we come up with an idea of uh, selling IT security trainings. And we put a little banner on the blog and the registration form. And on the day after, all of the 10 places were sold out. And we said, oh shit, we could charge more. <laughs> so, so we did it. And uh, we started up a, a second event. We charged more, charged more. And uh, two days after, we sold out all of the places. So, uh, one thing, uh, if you are going to sell something uh, and you don't know what's the price, uh, what are the rates, uh, try with the higher and then go down. Not start with a lower price and then go up. Because uh, I think in most of the cases when we were uh, doing negotiations with the companies and, and we, are, we were ch charging the companies for the um, Monday, which basically uh, is eight man hours. Um, the, the, the rate is dynamic. Uh, some people say it should be some constant plus the percentage of the car your business partner comes to the meeting with. Uh, and that's 100% uh, true. Uh, so if, if you do business with bigger companies, uh, don't be afraid to ask more. Uh, they have professional buyers, like the whole departments, that will negotiate your deal. And they will try to go down with the price up to, I don't know, 30, sometimes 50%. And if you uh, try to be nice and give them a good price, they will still want to have those 30%, because this is how the company works. Uh, so all of the time, if you are negotiating with the bigger clients, you need to add something so that uh, buying department will be happy that they were able to negotiate down the deal. Uh, it's scary, but that's how the world actually looks like in our business. I, I just, um, I think we have a whole list of questions. Maybe we'll make this the final long question. 
We'll go to the short ones, the very quick ones, and then we'll see how much energy and air is left in that room, okay? And so that, okay. So, um, what would you tell the people that are thinking of something and are kind of not even afraid of making the first step, but for some reason they're just making, finding excuses not to make it, even if they're not afraid, they're just, they're just like hesitant to make the first step. So, there are, so you're, uh, the question is about the people who are kind of afraid of taking the steps, but they have some idea, but they are working for a nice company and they have a, a loan in Swiss uh, currency and uh, four kids and this but kind. Then don't do it. <laughs> no, I'm to be serious. Uh, I think that you know, it's you can either take a risk. So you can either, you know, just you know, leave your job and you have a, such a great vision and you know it will work for sure and everybody will buy it. So if, if, it, if it's so, then, then just, just do it. So if you have a great vision and you have someone who, who can help you, some kind of co-founder or people that can support you, just, just do it. You know, in, in the worst case, you will, uh, you know, play with your company for half a year and then just find another job. So it's not a big risk. But if for some reasons you have that, you know, Swiss uh, currency loan and, and for kids, then you could try to kind of prototype and experiment the market. So for instance, if you have a great idea for a mobile application or a web application, then don't leave your job and don't invest, you know, 30,000 Polish lottery into the development and so on. Just, you know, make a simple page saying what is this, what it does, and, you know, you don't even cut it into HTML, just make a big JPEG and put it into the internet and drive the traffic from Google, from advertisement, and then just see what people, how they react, if they click to the register button, if they send you emails, if they like it. So, if you have such a proof of your concept, then the risk is much slower. But that's not a proof. Well, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's a yeah, well, it's not a proof, but it's at least something, you know, that there is, there is some demand. You can, you can, you know, it depends on the copy on your site, but you can say, this application does that and that, if you are interested, just click here. So you can basically, uh, step by step, build a confidence inside you. And if you, have a, if you have a lot of confidence, then just leave your job and make great things. I totally agree with, uh, with Kuba. It's, it's, uh, starting a company is about taking risk. Uh, it's about uh, responsibility. You will hire the people with children, you will hire the people uh, with their own loan. Uh, so it's not like... Uh, uh, it's a lot of fun, of course, but it's, it's not like a child's play. It's about... Uh, you have to be a really, really responsible person. And uh, I totally agree with Kuba, as I said. It's, you, you don't have to... Uh, your first thought just uh, drop everything, your job, your family, move to other cities. It doesn't work this way. Uh, you can do it step by step. Uh, it's always, as I said, about taking risks. So you have to, you have to uh, go out your comfort zone. Because uh, it's a new reality, actually. If you, if you, if you work... Actually, I never work for somebody, but... <laughs> I could imagine, it's, it's actually it's a really, really uh, new reality. And uh, we are talking about, uh, there's a lot of people uh, who are successful and when they start their own company, but look of course for the people uh, who didn't succeed. And so you have to decide what you want to do in your life. What's your passion? Uh, what, what are your value? And, uh, but of course it's really, really worth it. You have to decide if you want to do it or no. If you want to do it, just do it. Uh, I would say if your IQ is higher than the temperature in this room, uh, you will succeed. And even if you don't succeed, you will learn from your mistakes. And uh, you will have uh, 
more knowledge to actually start a new idea. Um, I know that some people say that there are no wrong ideas, uh, but just wrong execution. Uh, and that's probably it sums up everything. So, if you have any idea, it doesn't cost you much. Uh, starting a company right now in Poland is probably 250, uh, 250 zlotys for the, you know, some um, legal things. And that's it. If you cannot invest 250, uh, you shouldn't probably be here. But if you have that much money, you can start something. And step by step, as Rafael said, uh, you can build something really good. I could also add something to what I said uh, in order to, uh, about, about building the confidence. So what, what we have done at Atelier, I just realized that that when we sent our concept, just the concept with PowerPoint to, to London, this was something about building the confidence because at that time we have been working for uh, previous companies. So, so we just you know, sent the concept and we wanted the market to, to evaluate, evaluate the concept. So what did we do? We could do the same. There is plenty such such events, even in Poland today. There is Startup Weekend in Warsaw, there is that Startup Fest organized by Agora in two months. You can just send your concept for such a competitions and just, you know, wait what they say. And if they invite you, just, you know, pretend you have prototype users and company. And <laughs> But the event, as you said, the, the, there are really wonderful times right now for, for starting the new company. Probably never in the history was, it wasn't easier. And uh, the event, was said about startup weekends, you can work your, uh, your, your, your job and go for a weekend and build a team and build a startup idea and probably find the investors who will invest in your, your company. Uh, so, uh, to say more optimistic. It's really, really easy right now, and it's totally up to you. Thank you. So, right now we will move to the round of quick questions. There are ten questions. The, rule, the rules are, you just have to answer what the first noun or idea that comes to your mind. But don't try to be relative, because we don't have time for being relative. Um, okay, if you could live in one place, uh, Krakow or San Francisco, or the Valley? Definitely Krakow. San Francisco. Uh, can Krakow become a thriving startup city? Yeah, definitely. I, I think that. <laughs> definitely. I think it is right now. Um, which CEO or entrepreneur do you admire the most? Uh, he's not CEO anymore. <laughs> I really like uh, Richard Branson. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know the name, but all of the people who actually manage Polish railway, railways. <laughs> I don't know anybody else who fucked up so bad. <laughs> uh, Work-life balance, is it possible? No. I couldn't hear the question. Uh, Work-life balance, is it possible? Yeah, it's true. No. If you're doing your hobby. Uh, what type of industry would you like to get into in the future? The yellow cheese industry. Yeah. <laughs> dairy, dairy product. In the future. Actually, I'm happy with that right now. I believe it's called gastronomy. Food. I like food. Um, when growing up, you wanted to be a... An astronaut. You don't have dreams? First thought. Astronaut as well. I, I, I realize most of them my dreams. It's, I'm really happy right now. <laughs> All right. Um, what would you need to uh, What would you need to achieve to tell yourself now I can stop working? Um, it just 
it is impossible to stop working. Okay. <laughs> but, but then your passion is your, is your work. It's, it's, like, it's like stopping doing your hobby, your passions. No such thing. And the last one. Um, we don't have the last one because I was asking of the ways to spend that free time. But you would choose to continue working, so you don't, we'll, not, we'll never have free time. So guys, do you have any questions? Do you have energy for more questions? Yeah, okay. Um, can you shout, please? Did we, we get the question? I didn't quite get it. I think the question is about the invoicing in, in Poland and Dominic, you asked if we are still invoicing? Yeah. yeah. Do you have any other ideas? Yeah, so, so the challenge is that, you know, we have, in a tail, we have, I think, 12,000 customers different. Any more questions, Eva? Um, you must have a million ideas, a million projects that you couldn't pursue at any minute, at any minute of the day. How, what processes do you use to choose which are the ones worth pursuing? Uh, I, can t I have a new idea for this. <laughs> For a project in a startup, and maybe later on I can tell you. But what what process I do have? When I was kind of younger, uh, it was three years ago. So uh, I before starting company, yeah, company makes me older. So when I was um, three years ago, I thought that I do have that brilliant idea. I will not tell anybody before we sign the NDA. Uh, and, and I was totally wrong. And what I, I, what, I, what I did, I started to tell about my ideas to everyone. Because I'm not afraid that someone will steal my idea. You know, I have 100 ideas per minute, and, and, and I believe other people's as well. So, so I'm, I'm sure they, are, they don't have time to create my ideas instead of their. So, so what I'm doing right now, Every time I meet someone, I just tell him my idea and just listen to the feedback. I did it for Itami. Before I co-founded Itami, I met many people uh, telling them about my uh, idea. And the half percent of them told me, you're crazy, it will never work. And the other says, go ahead. So, you know, I'm just telling my ideas to others and listen to their feedback. And uh, if some of you have a great idea and want to tell me and listen to my ideas and give me feedback, then we can meet on the lunch or somewhere and just talk. So, yeah, tech, talking to people is definitely the the right way. And, um, there is, of course, uh, as, as we talked before, uh, I talked to a lot of uh, people who are doing. S s try to start their startups or, or, or seed, and I've seen only one idea. Uh, it was from MCI. It was, uh, one of the company came with uh, with a guy from MCI, and he, he, he came with NDA. And definitely talk to everybody about your idea and uh, observe and watch the people and see how they polarize. Uh, the same was with Chupcha. A lot of people say, okay, there was no way two-year-old uh, children can come and sit in front of the computer and play with it. And uh, it pissed me off really much and, <laughs> and it gives you the energy to do it. A lot of people will say, of course, uh, uh, it's a really great idea, do it. And so definitely talk to people and listen to them. Either way, if they hate it, it's great, just ask them why they hate it. I would like to present more technical view on ideas, like implementing an idea I got about improving my business. Uh, for example, such stu stupid and small thing like changing the color of the banner uh, that we use to uh, get some traffic from the other side. Uh, if you have a stupid idea about going into, I don't know, orange or red, just do it, uh, leave it for a few days, uh, compare statistics, and then you have outcomes. So, Basically, 
uh, my idea will be like implement, test, get the results and decide which solution is better and improve your uh, ideas or the core of business model. I will add one thing. There's also, the, when you start your own company, uh, there's a limited, uh, limited uh, number of ideas you can uh, do it by yourself. So, um, sharing the idea with other people will um, really, natural, really naturally give the people, the right people, who yeah, inspire to be the natural leader of, of your idea. Okay, any more questions from the audience? Yeah, one. Mm, I see one. Hey. Is, is one of the objectives of life? people with great ideas and in touch with potential business partners and investors and if that is the case is it going to be some sort of process that people in touch? So I guess I will start and then. So I guess the answer is we don't yet have a very structured plan of like what Hive will turn into. I guess first of all we want to build a community. I mean, we don't want to build it, we want it to build itself, pretty much. We just want to enable it, just to have those kind of meetings. I'm sure people will interact. Uh, we, we don't right now have any s connections with investors. I mean, we know investors, but it's not like there is some kind of process. I guess it's it's mostly for, for networking, for meeting the same investors who have their own processes, but so we, we just want to ha have a place like that and like have some kind of meetings on a, on a regular basis. You might be potential investors or business partners at these meetings mm -hmm. and there might be somebody putting them in touch through Facebook or through some sort of process. Yeah, definitely. After this, we will have a quick... Uh, um, I, I would guess we will have like ten, five minutes for announcements if anybody has any. And then obviously everyone is welcome to post um, stuff on our Facebook wall if somebody's interested. So I'm pretty sure we can probably make it more formal, but I guess right now we're just learning as we go because we just started. So we don't really have that much things to thought out. I don't think there will be a formalized process, but uh, networking is the way uh, to do it and we'll try to make it uh, entertaining and uh, make it so that, so that both investors and entrepreneurs come to those places and that's how it happens, I guess. And if you have an idea, then there will be a period, uh, uh, there will be a time for announcements and if you want to have your idea heard by investors who are here, go for it. Yeah, the stage is yours. More, more questions? Yeah. Well, something to uh, uh, well, set before you could, for example, try to invite investors, mm -hmm. or you can uh, you could give some space at the end of the meeting, for example, for some light talks where investors who are interested mm -hmm. uh, they can listen to it, some pitches, for example. I mean, uh, lots of ideas. What you said before was brilliant. There are no wrong ideas, just wrong execution executions, actually. So, actually, I think there's a cost here. So I guess for the first meeting we wanted it's it's a, it's a it's a great feedback. So it's a, for the first meeting we just wanted to experiment with the venue, see how many people are actually interested. Apart from signing in on Facebook, which doesn't mean that much. So we there are some investors in that room, as far as I know, some early stage investors. We're also very um, like applicant is also like happy to support some ideas if, if somebody wants to share anything with us. I'm pretty sure there are many possibilities. We, again. I don't think we will be gaining that much more structure because we just want to make sure everybody feels they're a part of it and everybody can, you know, like, so that we have some great initiatives. Okay. Okay, so... Just one question to the guests. Because, guys, you, I mean, you've got, um, you obviously are, are running success businesses, but you're not alone, right? So you've got your own team. And my question is, how do you motivate them? How do you motivate them that they stay with you, don't go to competition? How do you motivate them that after a couple of years they still want to do something good for your company? Yes, yeah, so the question was about team and motivation, if somebody doesn't get that. Uh, that's uh, motivation of the team, especially the uh, developers team. It's a challenge, I think. And 
I am totally not a fan of any motivation based on kind of money and the premium and bonuses and so on. I have discovered that one of the most important things that motivates people is just appreciating and telling them they're doing a great job. I mean, if someone is doing a great job, just tell, tell him. And it's not that common. We are usually very busy in the office and we just forget just to tell someone that you've done a great job with this web application design and so on. So I think that one of the best motivation is the, just to tell people how good they are. And I am not a big fan of any rankings, who is the best performer, and employee demands, and the bonuses and premium plan and KPIs and so on. Just tell people they are great. When you start your own company and become a CEO, it's most about um, creating a really good environment uh, for uh, for other people, for uh, giving them challenge, to, um, develop their passion, develop their ability, skills, and so on. So, if they will be the place when they every employee will have a place to develop themselves, you'll be really happy. She will be really happy, and that's the place for me. What motivates them the, the best? That's the number one motivation. So uh, it's not the money. I agree. It's about. Uh, self-development of all the people. And if all the people will, uh, will improve their skills, will, will develop themselves, the whole, the, the, the whole company the, the, the will be better and everybody will be happy doing what, what he's doing. I also don't believe in that success-driven bullshit, but uh, I mean, if you, if you have somebody and if you uh, give them a space, uh, if you invest a time in them, if you explain them what's the mission, uh, you probably just know that this is the right person to work at your company. Uh, I am very selective, uh, mostly because of the nature of the work. Uh, if somebody had a problem with the law and police, uh, they cannot work with us because of the uh, clients. And so it's not money, it's uh, making them in charge of something, making them responsible for, for uh, some part of the company uh, and giving, giving them feeling uh, that they can build uh, some of the, their own ideas uh, of course uh, under your supervision or using your resources um, uh, company name and whatever I, th I think that works Okay, I think we'll have to wrap up I guess everybody is tired uh, but so we would like to make a quick round of announcements if uh, somebody wants to like have his idea or her idea heard then uh, please don't hesitate to come to the stage are there any yeah or, 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 or just speak up are there any can I have one question yeah sure uh, is there anyone here who uh, actually started a business and failed could some, could some of you come here and tell us why did you fail? Why do you think you failed? Uh, so basically, I started a company and failed. Uh, we were uh, five guys, and fortunately, it did not work because of one of the guys, so... <laughs> it's, it's not a very hidden secret because we were five and then we didn't work out with this guy, so we basically break up and the other four started a company, so it was pretty much obvious, but, but it's something that it was like very shocking at the time because we work uh, with a person like one year, two years, and then it suddenly uh, doesn't work out, the person starts to behave completely uh, the way you expect or the way you know for the year, so uh, it's something complicated. Uh, but you, when you are having like uh, co-founders and this kind of stuff, you need somehow be careful. But I cannot tell you how you can know that, right? Uh, you cannot know that up front, it seems. But that's one thing to be aware from time to time. Yeah. So do you have a different company right now? Yeah, with the other three guys and. 
yeah, we basically started and everything works great. <laughs> yeah, not really, but uh, basically now with the other three guys, we are together working this other company. We created another company from scratch. Are now 15 people working there, and everything's working great. Uh, we are very uh, strong friends. So yeah. This is something I'd like to show you that even if you fail the first time, you still have a chance to build something good. I, I, I suppose the other two people, uh, probably right now, they have a different ideas they pursue and they are successful, or maybe not. If not, there is also an uh, exception for every rule. <laughs> Emma, do you want to share something? Yeah, really. It's like a self-help meeting. So. <laughs> Uh, mine was a uh, well, business that failed because it was the wrong product, in the wrong market, at the wrong time, <laughs> too high price, I loved it, it was cheese. <laughs> Anyone else? Like we, one of the products of Applicate failed badly because we didn't have a business model and the market was bad. But <laughs> it's a good lesson. Hey, my name is Tom and I failed. <laughs> Actually, it was, a, it was a small startup, uh, three people, uh, doing something quite cool over four months. Uh, but the problem was that we didn't put enough focus on that, and uh, we all had lots of lots of stuff to do apart from this uh, this business. And it simply fell apart. Some of us started finding jobs, and uh, actually one of us found a job. And the idea just died. The thing I learned out of this is that when you have a good idea, uh, you should really do your best and uh, like give 100% of yourself and and really try it out properly because I, I still have this feeling that maybe if we would go a bit further further then uh, yeah it could work out. Now I'm trying again and I hope I won't stand here again in two minutes or so. Like, and I, I know it's like it's not easy to I think it's very interesting to hear the stories of people that actually didn't make it. I know there is even a, a conference in San Francisco, I guess, right about that time. It's called FailCon. So people are no, it's actually people are sharing their entrepreneurial stories when when they failed for some reasons, and and I think the outcomes are great because people can learn a lot and get them, they can get ready for succeeding because one of the definitions of succeeding is just like not realizing that you failed so many times on the way because you just keep going and you don't realize that you're failing until you succeed. I guess. Have any more announcements? People who want to share what they're doing, working on? Okay, so let's call it a day, right? We have announcements. Just uh, uh, has some announcements. First of all, we would like to hear your feedback after this meeting. We would like to know. Yeah, we would like to know what you what you think. Our info will be up there uh, on the on the wall. So please. Tell us what you think. Uh, you can also suggest uh, speakers uh, or what would you change in the formula of, this, uh, of those meetings. So that's one thing. Another one is that we're also looking for sponsors. Uh, so uh, if there are any people that like this idea, like what we're doing here, then uh, yeah, also the same thing. So. Yeah, I think that's it. And so right now uh, we have some logistics. So we will have to rearrange this room, so if most of you could go out and just enjoy yourself outside, that would be awesome. <laughs> and we need like five people to stay here and carry the, the furniture. Great, that would be awesome. Thank you.